Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs and I had forgotten how completely crazy this game is. The story is just bizarre, but in a good way. So I decided to record just the prologue. In case you've never seen it before, they don't write them like this anymore. The Valkyrie Profile series is obviously based on the concepts and ideas in Norse mythology. Wow, amazing animated intro. I'm grim. It hurts. Help me. Save me. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it, it's a monster. You think it's foolish, brother, because you're content with what you have. You're wrong. Valkyrie, yes, Freya, do you hear it? Uh, what is this? That is your power, the power to hear the sorrow, anger and hopes of humans, near death, the power to hear their souls cry out. It is your task to take the souls of those chosen departed within yourself. I am to search amongst the souls of the departed for those worthy to become heroes? Yes, that is why. That is why what? Let us go. If we go even closer, you will be able to synchronize your soul with theirs. Then you will understand more. Human souls? Take them into myself. Ah, this is the human realm action. Arngrim, help them out, won't you? says Lorfer. This beast is tough. Ah, and the soldiers are not having a good time with this harpy. Nuisance, out of my way, says Arngrim. And he rushes towards the harpy. Let me assist you, says Lorfa. Start of first battle. The harpy gets first strike with thunder strike. That's nasty. Fortunately, we have pretty high HP, but we got to last a few rounds, it looks like. It's pretty simple so far. Just one button press per character. But the enemy is tough. We just keep wailing on it. I hope I don't need to replenish any HP here. No, we've, we've got him. One more thunder strike, but he's gone. She. A harp is usually a she. And cut to a domestic scene. Arngrim is back home. Welcome home, brother, says Roland. Whoa! Are you okay? Yeah, just sit down. You're still drawing that stuff? 
Art is more than just that stuff. If you can't sell it, what's the point? I don't do it for money. Huh. Whatever. A brother. It's different. Different than war, where you just kill people. What? I don't fight for money. I'm a mercenary because I enjoy it. Same as you, right? Oh dear. He enjoys it? I don't give a damn about expressing myself or whatever. He's got a few chips on his shoulder, has Arn Grimm. Say, Roland, what's fun about making art anyway? You think it's foolish, brother, because you're content with what you have. Mm. For me, drawing pictures has always been a way to escape the confines of this frail body of mine. I'm sorry, brother. I know that part of the reason you fight is to support me. I'll leave the money here. That statue? Uh, it's a present from his highness. They give it to the guy who kills the most people in battle. And a new scene? With the advisor, I guess he is Lombard. Princess. It is unseemly for such a lovely young princess who will one day rule the country to lose her temper in such a disgraceful manner. Silence, Lombard, says Gilanda. Or rather, she shouts. I will not stand here silently and accept abuse from the likes of you. We cannot allow such behaviour from a boorish mercenary, Princess Gilanda. You need not concern yourself with regards to this matter, Princess. I will take care of everything. Shilanda thinks for a bit. And she snatches his staff or ceremonial scepter from him. She is some princess. She knows her own mind. Oh, and she throws the scepter in a fit. Now here's the scene that caused this ruckus. The king. Thanks to your meritorious efforts, the barbarians have been driven back. He knows how to use his posh words. I salute you all, and among you, I believe, is the greatest warrior of all, Sir Arngrim. Humph. To you, I present a cash bonus and this statue. Arngrim marches towards the throne. King's thoughts, although I'm sure mercenary taste, is no different than that of a barbarian. How delightful, says Arngrim. I thank you from the bottom of the gaping void in my soul. Ah, amazing stuff. I love it. Arngrim's thoughts. You think this makes everything all right? This cheap little statue's nothing but a lie. Ah, you're such a feeble little king. What? What are you? I don't have time for this farce. This statue looks a lot like you, don't you think? Uh, uh, father! Aunt Grimm is swinging his sword at a throne pillar. Don't waste my time with this crap. You ungrateful brute! To subject my father to such barbarism. Ten thousand deaths are not enough for you. Aunt Grimm stalks off with the statue and the cash. Guards, take him! What are you doing? Nobody lifts a finger. That arrogant lout, there must be some way I can get him. Let me think. I've got it. If you thought these were extraordinary scenes, just wait, the story gets 
really bizarre from now on. There's no speech trigger. Arngrim can't talk to Roland, but as he tries to walk away, just sit down and relax. Unless I occasionally nudge Arngrim, nothing happens. Uh, do you want something? Aren't you? I mean, uh, might you be Sir Arngrim? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I am. Um, I mean, uh, my name is... Um, Jella... Uh, Jella? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, no, Jella, um... Uh, my name is Angela. A silence from both. And uh, what do you want from me, um, Lady Angela? I came uh, to offer you a job. Are you serious? Uh, you've got time, says Roland. Why not talk to her? <sighs> so here we are in town now, and Arngrim says, So where are we going? Uh, let's go to uh, one of those restaurants. Uh, do you know of any fine establishments? Well, this place over here is about as fine as it gets in Artolia. And into the restaurant they go. Nan Lu Garden, the only gourmet Yamato-style restaurant in Artolia. Its promise to the citizens of the continent is a taste experience many Westerners find rather Bizarre. And sure enough, a waitress, may I take your order? I have no idea. Angela, let's see, I'll take this, and this, and this. And what would you like to drink? Um, this, and this, and one of these. Hey, I really gonna eat all that? Why would I? I'll just have what I want and leave the rest. Poor Arngrim is by now holding his forehead in pain. So, uh, what was it you wanted to hire me for? Why don't we talk while we eat? Thirty minutes later... Uh, call your manager! Huh? I said, call your manager! The waitress goes off. Uh, don't act like such a, a spoiled little princess. Ha! Poor Arngrim doesn't realise he's spot on. And here comes the manager. Head chef, is something not to your liking? Not to my liking, you say? What is this meat? It's raw. Uh, but miss, that is called sashimi. It's classic Yamato cuisine. I love sashimi. And what's this cloudy soup? It smells awful. It must be rotten. Miss, that's an absolute staple of Yamato cuisine. Miso soup. Ah, authentic miso soup. There's a little cafe in town where we can get it and it just tastes different from anything I can make at home. Boy, are they having a lot of fun here at the expense of certain taste buds. And what about this? It's a monster. You're trying to make me eat baby krakens? Uh, but miss, uh, that's just plain octopus. You serve monsters here? I assure you, miss. I have never been so insulted in my entire life. Ah, now my throat is parched. Uh, she reaches for a water glass and... Ah, what kind of water is this? Are you trying to poison me? How dare you? Ten thousand deaths are not enough for you. And she keels over on the floor. Apparently fast asleep. Or rather knocked out from the experience. The waitress appears. Your bill, sir. And poor old Arngrim puts his head down on the table. Of course we save this gem. 
This is one of the best scenes I have ever seen in any JRPG. So we're back at the brothers' humble home with Angela prostrate and knocked out on the bed. Uh, Roland says, So this happened before you could hear what she wanted? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Angela groans in her sleep. Arngrim is alarmed. Princess J J Jolanda? He only now recognises her. What's going on? says Roland. Well, I know she came here in disguise to hire me for a job. Roland limps out of the room. Clearly it's his leg that's the problem. Um, she's very proud. Da. Huh? Talking in her sleep, eh? Da. Arngrim is pensive. Foul oathbreaker. Ten thousand deaths are not enough for you. He sits down on the bed next to her. So that's it. I understand now. I insulted that girl's father right in front of her. Of course, I didn't mean to. I just wanted to show what a gutless coward the king is. What I did wasn't wrong. But... But a daughter can't help but love and honor her own father. Is there any child that would not feel anger at seeing their sire made a fool of? He's beginning to realize the situation. Where am I? It's already evening. Yeah, it is. I have to go. Oh, is it okay? If I come back tomorrow to make you an offer? Yeah, sure. And little miss scampers off. A job offer, huh? Probably some sort of revenge for what I did to her father. When she comes tomorrow, I'll apologise to her. And now a complete change of scene. New characters. Badrak, you're late. So, what's your offer this time? It's short notice, but I need you to help another man deliver. What? Give me a break. You're wasting my time for that? Come on, the pay is top price, so will you take it? Dangerous cargo, eh? Well, I'll take it, but I want 5,000. My price has doubled. Fine, it's a deal. You serious? Well, if you say so. Uh, by the way, who's the other guy you got me teamed up with? You'll meet him soon enough. Huh. So the agent leaves. I don't know what that guy's up to. As long as I get my money, I could care less. The next day, at home, with Arn Grimm and Roland. There is no dialogue option with Roland. So we can now go outside in front of Arngrim's house and... Okay, not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Just checking I can get back inside. It says enter. Oh, surprise. A brother, you have a visitor. The agent, I need to speak with you. Arngrim seems to know the agent. Is this about a job? Yeah. Did you take it? I leave tomorrow morning. You'll be alone again for a few days. And what about the princess? Cancelled, probably. Well, talk about cancelled, you just wait. <laughs> wow, this is something of a surprise. My partner's gonna be you then, eh? Hmm. 
Ah, oh, don't give me that. The name's Badrack. Nice to meet you, Arngrim. I've heard all about you. If you must engage in such meaningless blather, do it on the road. This cargo must be delivered. Yes, ma'am. It was about a week's journey away along the great road. But the journey was uneventful, and by the third day we were halfway there. I'm getting plenty of money for this job, so who really cares what's in the thing? Hey, Mr. Bodyguard. Arngrim is ever the silent type. Grr, that Lombard. Lombard? Artolia's chief counsellor? You mean it wasn't the agent who hired us? Hey, Bodyguard, something's coming up behind you. What? Knights and lots of them. Knights? Oh, we're in for trouble now. The dust looked to have been kicked up by a group of Altorian cavalry. It seemed like they were chasing something, but I never imagined it was us. Halt! Surrender your cargo for inspection. Hey, hold up. When I think about it now, I never should have agreed to take that package without knowing what was inside. It just wasn't like me. Uh, these are the ones, say the knights. Arngrim is getting cold feet. Let's get out of here. And they run. Hey, hold on a sec, says Badrak. What? Now there are some quick flashbacks. Our parcel? It was that little tomboy princess. Jalanda. Uh, Badrak says, uh, Looks like we'll have to wait till night and run. Hmm. Oh, damn that Lombard, he totally screwed this. You filthy, you knew? No, I, I didn't know what was in the damn thing. It's just that my uh, client was Lombard, like always, and did those soldiers know that Lombard... Eh, no way, can't be. The guy's a Vilnor spy, you know. What? Nobody was supposed to know what was in the thing, man. If Vilna got their hands on the princess, they'd have Artolia in the palm of their hand. I'd have been quite happy to kill a stinking knave. But I've got more important things to do. Ah, uh, Arngrim! It hurts! Help me! Save me! And now, extraordinary. There are sounds of uh, struggling and dying men coming over. What? Badrak is off. Hey, what the hell is that? The knight says, help us. Hey, says Arngrim, what's going on? Jilanda? Um, because the princess was unconscious. The captain told us to give her this medicine that he got from Lombard. Oh, oh. Isn't that the princess? 
Lumbert was playing two hands. He knew the abduction would be discovered, so he sent some medicine along with the search party. If we made it all the way to Vilnor, no problem. But if we were discovered, the cavalry would use the medicine. He knew the princess would be unconscious if she was found. The medicine's effect was as you see. The princess became a monster, and afterwards all were dead. Perhaps even the princess. That's exactly what happens when somebody drinks ghoul powder, says Badrak. Ghoul powder? Yeah. It turns a person into a howling demon. Necromancers use the stuff all the time. Lombard is a necromancer? Oh, this doesn't look good. Angela. Angela? You mean Jolanda? What are you talking about? It's time we get back to Atolia. I'm getting out of here. See ya. Maybe he made the right choice. I don't know. But I wasn't going to run. Even on the field of battle, I'd never felt like this. Lumbert! I'm going to kill you. But what will become of Jolanda? Our first real battle with Freya and the Valkyrie Lenners. Stop! That's human. Life is not something to be thrown away. If you are a true warrior, you will find your path in the maelstrom of battle, says Lenneth. The battle maiden Valkyrie? Who hadn't heard the tales? Of the endless war the gods wage with the creatures of darkness. Come to me, dark warriors. Battle awaits us. Our first look at the combat parameters. Angrim is first and strikes a nice blow, and then Lenneth, similar. But Freya's magic wind attack has a long build-up and cool-down period, so we need to remember that and use her first in the sequence. I'm thinking that way the combos might work better. Uh, we've whittled down the demon Jolanda quite nicely. That attack on Lenneth looked nasty, but was actually not that powerful. And we're giving her a good old walloping. Over attack! Yeah! She's a goner. Well, hopefully just the demon. Otherwise, Arngrim might be heartbroken. Battle is my greatest pleasure. But this was different. You think it's foolish, brother, because you're content with what you have. You're wrong! It was through others' misfortune that I felt myself to be strong. That's right. I, who was myself without morals. Who was I to judge others? Who was I to look down on them? Injustice. I began to realize that the king and I were very much the same. So, what's happened to Jolanda? 
Ah, I thought you might show up sooner or later, says Lombard. You really should have just run away. It will avail you nothing to cause a disturbance here, young man. Maybe not, but it'll sure as hell avail me to smash your face in. I see. Arngrim, you may be a genius on the battlefield, but when it comes to the higher arts, you know little. You realise you are already dead. What? Magic, Arngrim? <laughs> Let me show you. Ah! I beg of you! You must save Arngrim, please! Save? How do you think he might be saved? Uh, I... I... By being allowed to continue to live, or by being chosen by me? Yet one thing does strike me as odd. I'd have believed it if you ran away, but could a human really have defeated a ghoul? I can't imagine. That's him! That's the man who betrayed me! What? Ah, now I understand. We have a little conspiracy here, don't we? Conspiracy? Ha! I hear you're the expert on that subject. Defiler of souls, your sins lay heavy upon you. Come to me, Dark Warriors! Battle awaits us! That's a nasty firestorm Lombard has, but we are stronger. In fact, this looks almost too easy. I'm sure I chose normal difficulty. But I'm guessing it's just relatively easy in the prologue to get you into the system, and I'm sure it'll ramp up later on. Prepare yourself, rebel scum, says the soldier. Where did he come from? Arngrim's thoughts? These slipshot soldiers think they can call me rebel scum? <laughs> Look, friend, don't expect me to do you any favours. I'm not going to die. I guess they don't have much use for heroes with true strength up in Asgard, eh? Vain, glorious human, says Valkyrie. Strength is not everything. Uh, you want to talk, death goddess. Impudent fool, Valkyrie is not a goddess of the dark. Such words will result in your certain death. Uh, uh, Angela? Eh? You... you knew? Uh, I see. So, you're safe, little one. I have one question. Aren't you just a death goddess? A god of death is merely responsible for the snuffing out of lives. I, however, can show you the path. Path? Yes, however, you must walk it on your own. St this pointless slaughter! Uh, old man, the Knight Captain, Arngrim, will you truly raise arms against me? He throws his sword away. Do I have any regrets? No. Why did you save me? Consider it a gift. 
it seems we'll be spending quite a bit of time together. That it does, little one. Quite a bit indeed. Fate can indeed be a cruel mistress, says Freya. Uh, what is it? asks Valkyrie. Nothing. Let us take leave of here. Next? Yes. Even the strongest steel must first be tempered, yes? To send them to Asgard directly would be only a death sentence. Concentrate once again. You should be able to feel the presence of the undead as well. And you press the start button or on the PS4, the touchpad for the concentration period, which will reveal locations on the overworld map. And here we are, magic, the Artolian mountain ruins. Now here's a bit of modern convenience magic, the quick save menu. You'll be familiar with this from handheld gaming. It allows you a one-time continue from where you left off, very convenient. And there's also a rewind feature, which I haven't tried out yet, but I'm sure it's jolly handy. Yes, I feel them. They are nearby. Let us go and see, says Freya. Here comes the tricky bit. Well, tricky for me. You have to navigate the overworld by using, I think it was the circle button and the left stick for flying. And the issue is that it uses by default inverted camera controls. Now, I absolutely dislike those. I always have non-inverted. So this completely threw me. However, I obviously managed in the end. And once you hover above the red point, you can then enter. The Artolian mountain ruins lie in the northern hills. The massive stoneworks have eroded over the years and their hulking forms peer eerily out from a deep blanket of fog. Ooh, shudder. A bonfire now burns there and an eerie screaming sound can be heard each night. Ooh, very welcoming. I sense an enemy, says Valkyrie. Great, we've only just arrived. A Freya? Yes, there is one, an undead. Lenith, are you ready? I can accompany you through this ruin, but when you leave this place, I must return to Asgard. Yes. Look at this, Lenith. That is the memory camp. Ah, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> This is where you can do a full save. I think you understand, but eating souls is a desecration of the dead. Having mercy on the undead is useless. Enough. Let's go. So here is the first dungeon, the Artolian Mountain Ruins. You have a basic 2.5D control scheme, so you can either go side-scrolling left to right, or up and down, or backwards forwards, depending on the level. At this point, I spent at least half an hour in the menu, familiarizing myself with everything. It is a fairly complex menu, uh, still a bit old-fashioned, of course, so I think it'll take a while before I've really grasped everything. But this is a game where you don't rush things. Anyway, I simply wanted to show you the prologue with that fascinating world setting and story. I hope you enjoyed the trip and I trust you will let me know whether you have played Valkyrie Profile Lenith and on which particular platform back on the PS1 or on the PSP or now on the PS4 or PS5. As always, thank you for watching.